Today we're going to talk about the Vanderbilts versus the Rockefellers. Ready? Let's go. What's up guys, Mark Cassara here. On this channel, we talk about faith, family, and finances. So I appreciate you guys sticking with us. Today, we're gonna talk about the difference between the Vanderbilts and the Rockefellers. And when you hear these names, you think, oh, these families are so successful. These families are so wealthy. These families are so rich. Maybe some of you even think, oh, these families are so corrupt. Mm-hmm right? Because we hear stories of what these families have done over the years or gotten into. But when I think about these families, I think about legacy. I think about these families creating a legacy and a name for themselves that lasts generation after generation. Now think back, think back to your grandfather. Do you know who he is? Do you know what his name was? Do you know what he was known for in his time? Do you know who your great-grandfather is? Do you know his name? Do you know what he was uh, known for back in his day? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Do you know who your great-great-grandfather is and what his name was and what he was known for? Most of us can't say that we know. Most of us don't even know who our great-grandfather is. I know I don't. I've heard his name once or twice. I have no idea who the guy is. The difference here is the Rockefellers and the Vanderbilts, and we can name tons more families, these people have created a system to follow so that their name is continued and valued and celebrated from generation to generation. Let's talk a little bit about the Vanderbilts. The Vanderbilts, their wealth began in the transportation industry. Cornelius Vanderbilt, who was also referred to as the Commodore, He amassed his fortune through investments in steamships and the creation of a vast network of railroads. Now, the family wealth was closely tied to the transportation industry and infrastructure industry, uh, and it initially was built through entrepreneurship. Cornelius was an entrepreneur, but he was also known to be very cutthroat in his business happenings. In the way that he conducted business, he made a name for himself. Let's just put it that way. Let's talk about the Rockefellers. John D. Rockefeller is like the most kind of famous person that we think about when we think about the Rockefellers. The Rockefellers' wealth originated in the oil industry. Did you know that the Rockefellers were who started Standard Oil. Standard Oil is still around today. Now, when it comes to business practices, like I said, the Vanderbilts were known to be cutthroat. They were competitive in their practices. They were competitive in trying to bring a monopoly over the railroad industry. Cornelius Vanderbilt was also involved in rate wars, trying to uh, manipulate prices, and he had aggressive tactics at con- trying to consolidate power over the railroad industry. He made a name for himself. John D. Rockefeller, on the other hand, was very systematic. He was very methodical in his approach to business. He made lots of partnerships. He had a vast network of people. People actually looked up to him. When it comes to philanthropy, which means giving away your money, the Vanderbilts did engage in philanthropy to, to an extent, but their contributions were not as extensive as the Rockefellers were. You see, the Rockefellers are synonymous with philanthropy. They're known to be giving millions and millions and millions of dollars away to charity. John D. Rockefeller established the Rockefeller Foundation. He gave away a significant significant portion of his wealth, contributing to the establishment of numerous institutions and innovations throughout our history. Let's talk about legacy. Legacy means how long does your name continue from generation to generation where people are, they know who you are and they know what you've done. See, the Vanderbilt's wealth began to diminish over time due to lavish spending poor financial management, and family disputes. As a matter of fact, their legacy is often associated with lavish living and opulent displays of wealth, which means they lived a very flashy life. Now, on the other hand, the Rockefellers, the Rockefellers were, again, systematic and very strategic. The Rockefellers started the Rockefeller Center in New York and the Rockefeller Foundation, which still continues to exist today. The Rockefellers' legacy was marked with both business acumen and their commitment to make a long-lasting, positive impact on the world. Now, don't get me wrong. 
The Rockefellers definitely had their hand in some shady practices. If you do a little research and you read some books, you'll understand that they were not perfect. And John D. Rockefeller had a, uh, a rough side to him as well. As a matter of fact, he, there's a quote that John D. Rockefeller, when he started the education system, the GED program, he donated millions of dollars to the program and he said, I want a nation of workers. I do not want a nation of thinkers. But that is for another video. When it comes to their wealth management, the Vanderbilts faced challenges in preserving their legacy due to, like I earlier stated, their extravagant living, to their spending on frivolous things, and to the lack and or inadequacy of proper estate planning. You see, right now, the Vanderbilts are not known for wealth. Yes, we know about Vanderbilt University in Tennessee, but who else do we know that is still living that has been passed down wealth from the prior generation? There's only a few living Vanderbilts on this earth today, and they are not wealthy. Or if they are wealthy, they've acquired their wealth through other means, and it wasn't through the family legacy. You may not know this, but Anderson Cooper, who was a key player in CNN, he's actually a Vanderbilt. And it was Anderson's great-grandfather who was named Cornelius Vanderbilt. Now, the Rockefellers, they were more successful in preserving their wealth because of meticulous estate planning and surrounding themselves with a board of directors and counselors and confidants and mentors and teachers and coaches that helped them continue to perpetuate their wealth from one generation to another. They used a whole systematic approach when it came to their family and their family's legacy. And there's a great book by Garrett Gunderson that talks about how the Rockefellers put together their entire estate plan. And you can get that. I'll drop a link down in the description section so you can go ahead and check out that book. I think you can get it for free on Garrett Gunderson's website. But they created a web of trusts and estates, lots of different financial tools to contain, to preserve, protect, and to perpetuate their wealth from one generation to another. They truly prioritized the responsible management and transfer of wealth from one generation to another to ensure its longevity. And the Rockefellers are known to be one of the wealthiest families in the world up until today. Now, I love this stuff. I love learning about families and trusts and wills and how they bring all their finances together and how they create family legacies. Did you know that the Rockefellers also used life insurance to continue to preserve, protect, and perpetuate their wealth? We'll definitely get into that in another video, and we'll talk about some concepts and some creative ways that you can also do this. You don't need to be rich and wealthy to be able to start moving your financial decisions in the right direction. Well, I hope you learned something in this video. It was a short one, straight to the point. I appreciate you joining us, and I ask you to click that thumbs up button, subscribe, share this video with your network, and as always, Make sure you live well, laugh loud, and learn to be a better you. We'll see you in the next one.